Hello, I am back again with one more creational design pattern, the prototype. So, how this video will help you? By end of this video, you will be fully comfortable with what is prototype design pattern, when to use it, we will implement a real-time use case here, and how to handle deep and shallow copy. Consider subscribing the channel and hit the bell icon to see all the simplified and excited videos on CSAP which will help you to be a better programmer. Before going into this, let's answer this question. You already have creational design patterns like factories and builder. Why yet again one more creational pattern? Yes, you guessed it right. We have different creational patterns to solve different object creation problems and prototype is there to solve a specific creational problem. We will be going into the detail in this video. Having said that, let's see what is this pattern starting with a definition. The definition says, specifies the kinds of object to create using a prototypical instance and create new object by copying this prototype. So what does this mean? Let me try to explain visually. Say you have this object and you want to create a kind of similar object like this. So what you will do? Perhaps you can treat this object as a prototype and create a copy of it, right? Now as I mentioned, kind of similar object. So if you require to do a slight modification, you can always do to your copied object as we have modified our first and last copied object here. This is what prototype design is. Simple, right? The idea is to copy an existing object rather than creating a new instance from scratch. The existing object, in our case object A, acts as a prototype for newly created object. So you may have a question, what do we get doing this? This approach primarily saves costly resources and time, especially when the object creation is a heavy process. We will discuss this later when we discuss about when we should use this pattern. Now let's see the same thing in terms of code. Here we have a class person. Let's create an object of this class. Now say you want to create a kind of similar object. So in terms of programming, how do you copy? Yes, you already know it. Either you copy the object straight to another reference variable where it will also copy the reference of the object which is also known as shallow copy or you can create a separate instance of it and copy each value which is nothing but a deep copy. You can always modify the value of copied object if you wish to. So to conclude the definition, this pattern allows a client to request a copy of an existing object. Now before switching to Visual Studio, let's quickly look into the UML as I believe understanding diagram helps you in remembering the pattern. So here we have our abstract prototype. This can be an interface or an abstract class. It has a method called clone which is implemented by all the concrete classes that wants to allow itself to be cloned. Client is the one who requests the copies of the prototype. The UML is pretty simple. I hope you understood. Let's discuss a real-time use case which we are going to implement. We are going to take an example of agreement document preparation. Since we are into software, let's say you have a company that prepares software development agreements. As you know, agreements are between two parties. Say many company approaches you for these kind of documents. Let's assume that you maintain all these legal document templates in a remote secured server and say fetching this document contents are costly operation which consumes lot of time. So this can be an ideal case for implementing this pattern. You can design your class in a way that the class allows itself to create a copy of it so that it does not need to hit the remote server again and again. Having said that, let's flip to Visual Studio and create our first class that deals with remote server calling. To make things fast, I have already created the project and few classes. So you can see here, I have a folder called remote server. This has a class called agreement close with a method get agreement close. This method just loads all the agreement clauses like developer close, post delivery close, etc. And these clauses are returned as part of agreement DTO. This method is an expensive call as it is in the remote server. Now let's see our software agreement class. Currently, it just contains few private fields, vendor name and agreement DTO, and a print method to print the agreement details. It just prints the vendor name and other agreement clauses. Now this class is responsible for making the remote call via its constructor. It means 
remote call is a part of software agreement class creation process and hence we would like to avoid multiple creation of this class instead allow it to be cloned let's go ahead and complete this class assign the vendor name I would like this constructor to receive one reference type as well. Let's create a class called non-disclosure agreement with a property ID and name. Let's receive this as constructor parameter. Let's assign this to our private field. Now let's make our remote call to get all our agreement clauses. Since we are assuming that this is an expensive call, to simulate this behavior, let's give a thread dot sleep of 4 seconds. Let's give a short message. Let's print non-disclosure ID as well. Let's go to our client. Let me delete this existing code. Let's add prototype library reference. Let's instantiate software agreement class and call our print method. Let's say vendor name is ABC Consultancy. Say non disclosure agreement ID is 123. Let's run this. You can see it takes some time to retrieve the data. Now, finally, we got the data. Please note the NDA ID. This will be useful while discussing shallow copy and deep copy. So our remote server call implementation is done. Now we have to update the design so that the second call should avoid the remote server call and hence should execute much faster. So let's implement our prototype design pattern. Let's create our prototype interface I agreement. Add two methods to it shallow copy and print. Implement I agreement. Member Y is clone. This will do a shallow copy of this object. It means it will copy the references as well. Let's do a shallow copy from client and print it. Let's pass a message indicating which print is getting printed. Let's run this. You will observe that the second call will immediately give the result. See? So, our prototype design is working properly using shallow copy. But with shallow copy, at times you may get into some issue. Let's see that. Let's modify our software agreement class a little. Let's make this public. Let's cast it to our concrete type. Let's update non-disclosure ID of our cloned object. Let's print updated cloned agreement. Let's print our initial original agreement as well. Let's change the color of our message to green. Let's run it. 
Can you see the issue here? We have updated the ID only to our cloned object, but unfortunately our initial agreement ID has also changed. So how can we fix this? We can fix this by doing a deep copy. Let's see that. Let's add one more method to our interface. Deep copy. Let's implement the method. Cast it to concrete type and assign it to a variable. For deep copy, we create a new instance of our reference type and assign the value manually. Let's return the agreement. Let's change our client. Let's call deep copy instead of shallow copy. Let's run it. You can see the issue has fixed. The initial non-disclosure ID is still intact. Only the cloned one has changed. That's all for this session. As discussed in the beginning, I hope what is prototype design pattern, when to use them and how to do a deep and shallow copy is clear to you. Please comment and let me know. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If it did, then please hit the like and subscribe button and share this video with others to see more such content. Thanks.